And after a long departure, welcome back to FNM TV. We are up and doing recordings again, so I thank you for anyone who's actually kept their subscription and not to do this. Uh, today we have, for the first one, myself, Patrick Holland, playing John against Peter Goodman, running Naya Angels. Um, so we'll get this kicked off with uh, game one going in. Each round will be done uh, preceding mulligans. So... Patrick Holland on the left will start off with an overgrown tomb to Peter Goodrich's uh, Tap Sun Petal Grove and Forest. He's going in for a uh, Far Seek, if I'm not mistaken, catching a Temple Garden. The uh, quality will get better week to week as I do this. Um, it was also planned to be doing life totals with this one. Uh, Patrick Holland will play his overgrown. Uh, <laughs> Blood Crypt and past turn tapped to Peter, who is still shuffling. Um, yeah, we had life totals to make this easier, but um, I'm going to end up going doing life totals through this one with you guys visually. It'll come next week verbally for right now. I will uh, tell you guys what's going on. Peter will play a Huntmaster, go to 22, get a Wolf Token. Patrick Holland draws for his turn. Debating which land to drop for the turn. Cavern of Souls comes down. Proclaiming what I can only assume is either dragon or beast. And an underworld connections will come down on that Cavern of Souls for the turn. Four damage comes in, bringing Patrick down to 16. 16 to 22 now, stands the life totals. And then a Huntmaster will come down for Peter, bringing him up to 27. So, this RTR metagame has gotten pretty healthy. Um, this is shot before this uh, current weekend from Grand Prix... Uh, if I'm, forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, Bochum and Charleston. Um, both of those are going on. Control seem to have a big showing and um, reanimator style decks with like a Crater Hoof Behemoth being probably the most notable out of them. So Garrick comes down for Patrick on the left. We'll use Garrick Relentless Ability Zero to shoot the Huntmaster, making sure it does not flip. In comes both guys. I will be taking five, dropping myself down to 11. I keep switching from third person to first person. I don't know why I'm doing that, but uh, it happens. <laughs> and as you can see, Andrew was very kind to give us a uh, Match the Gathering 11th anniversary or 10th anniversary uh, mat to use for FNM TV for this week. Something was spilled on it later. We'll see if we'll get that back. Um, so Oblivion Ring will take out my... Yeah, I'm just going to stick to the first person. <laughs> Comes down for my overgrown Underworld Connections. I will go ahead and drop a Dragon Skull Summit and drop down a Rakdos Key Rune to hopefully stall his board a little bit and mitigate the damage coming in. Being at 11 life right now, I can take 3 damage and go down to 8 Kieran will come in, block the Thrag Tusk, and take the small damage. He's going to Slesnir Charm, which really doesn't matter. Trample over for four. F er, sorry, for five. Or sorry, it's six, actually. Six, seven, eight, nine. So I will be down to two life on my last legs over here. Well, Peter is still at 27 life. And he's going to far seek again. I uh, draw a cavern of souls. Nothing really for me here to do anything with. My draws were less than optimal this game. And also, it's just the suboptimal play. I think maybe the camera was getting to me in my decision making. 
it's kind of funny to say like how does that affect you but it does so right now i'm staring down a board of thrag tusk avison pilgrim and a uh, wolf token 2-2 wolf token my hand consists of a cavern of souls i believe a garrick uh maybe an olivia but olivia doesn't do anything either yeah it's just a rough situation trying to see if I can do anything to get this down. Being at two life, there's nothing really I can do. So I'll play in Olivia. And see if it scares him enough to not attack into me. That's really the only play in this situation. He does the math out. Swings these. Block the tusk. Shoot that. Still die. <laughs> and we'll go to game two in this best of three battle Peter Goodrich takes the first one I drop that one convincingly not even making a dent in his life total at all but that's what happens sometimes Jund hasn't been uh, faring too good these last couple weeks I had uh, one showing I believe in the SCG this past weekend um, this is the same weekend as Bochum and Charleston and it had two showings I believe um, in Bochum as well which is the European metagame which is kind of weird because like one of the Jun decks didn't have full play sets of the shock lands or the M10 lands which was interesting um, it really looked like it didn't even care about control it looked like my list from like three weeks ago which I was just like well maybe I should be playing in Europe so this game, game two just started. Very rapid fire. Land, land, go, land, land. Uh, Avison's Pilgrim. I drop down a Liliana. Uh, in this game, Peter actually mulled down to five. So he's playing at a disadvantage and very, uh, very important that he gets rid of that Olivia because it's just going to tick away his hand and I get to keep whatever advantage that I want against him. Him being down two. Uh, I'm going to slaughter games. And call out Thrag Tusk, I believe, in this one. And at this point, I had him pinned on just Naya. Um, like a Naya aggro, Naya beatdown deck. Um, and at this point, after I slaughter games him, he tells me that he's on Angels. <laughs> which is uh, considerably different. And things that I would have called in my first slaughter game. Like, I still think Thrag Tusk is like second choice but in this game i'm probably just calling angel of serenity um angel of serenity is really hard for a lot of decks to come back from it's really hard for jund um it's not as card advantage style as the the modern version and obviously the initial version when it was uh making its waves and standard but uh, card advantage is still extremely important for this uh, non-control deck, which can at times function as a control deck. Um, so I will drop my fifth land. I'll drop a Cavern of Souls, which I can only assume is calling Beast or Vampire. Uh, I already have another Cavern out, so both of those will be on there. Or maybe it's Dragon. I think I have two red sources. No, I don't have two red sources, so it has to be Dragon. I will cast a Olivia... He will flash in a Restoration Angel, which to me at this point, I have an Olivia, is not a big deal, but he also has a Devil's Play to get rid of my Olivia, which was definitely not something I saw. Searing Spear, yes. Devil's Play, no. I did not see that one coming. I will take three. Uh, that will bring me down to 17. I haven't gotten any damage on him at this point. Because I haven't been keeping track of life, actually. I forgot I had to do that job. <laughs> so, he's taking on Restoration Angel. At this point, I think I just want to drop a Tharag Tusk, but I do have that very useful uh, Tribute to Hunger. Not knowing what he can drop. He has 5 mana, he can drop a Tusk. At this point, I think I rather should have just dropped the tusk, but 
it's whatever. In retrospect, he drops the Garrick, which is fine. He's going to if he plus ones. No matter what he does, I minus I use the tribute, which if he ended up doing the minus three to draw three cards, would have made me look like a genius now, wouldn't it? But no, <laughs> he plus ones brings his Garrick up to four. which leaves him the ability to draw three next turn, which is not something that I wish someone who mulliganed down to five would do. So the correct play right here is to play my Garrick that is sitting in my hand to legend rule and get that off board. I believe he has one, uh, Peter has one card in hand at the moment. So Garrick will come down, legend rule, leave me with two mana up, two cards in hand one card in hand after playing my tapped uh, blood crypt seven mana isn't exactly where I want to be with this deck uh, I would rather hit five mana uh, or six mana and draw gas six mana is really good you'd be able to drop Olivia and keep open a shot um, a lot of people misplay Olivia as a four drop certain decks you can drop her on four uh, obviously against control because it doesn't really matter what they're going to do um um, certain positions against zombies, you can drop it down on four. Uh, especially if you're staring down blood artists, it gets those off board, um, which is very key. Um, but traditionally, she doesn't really function as a four drop. I figure she's a six drop. I think a lot of people will agree with me there. What are your takes on that, guys? Fill in in the comment section uh, how you think Olivia Voldaren should be utilized. So, going through here to get my beastie token. That's my 3-3 three, three beast off my swag tusk. I'm at 22 at this point. Gaining 5 from swag tusk against his 20. I actually gained 4 life also off of uh, the tribute hunger. So I should be at 26 at this point. I swing in. He takes both. He takes 6. So he's going down to 14 for what should be first damage this game. In comes a beast token. So I take four, I'm at 22. If my life is off, we'll figure it out at some point. I should be paying better attention to that. <laughs> Angel Serenity is really annoying, if you guys haven't figured that one out by now. Playing against it, easily one of the better cards in the format, and the fact that it was retailing at $8 or $7 when it first came out for SCG is just nuts. So, I will play down a Zealous Conscript, taking that and pushing out uh, 11 damage on Peter, dropping him down to 3. Very, very sweet spot over here. <laughs> Dropping your opponent to three life with plenty of, with a decent amount of burn in my deck. Uh, I believe the outs that I'm looking for in this are Bonfire, and if I'm not mistaken, I think I put in Rakdos Return in this for this matchup. Uh, I do not main board Rakdos Return anymore. Um, as much as I love it against the control meta that it has been, uh, if you're looking at the results from this weekend, the weekend of the uh, 17th, um, a lot of the control decks faltered against uh, hyper-aggressive decks, which their control decks, they're going to have issues with that stuff anyway, so um, that's to be expected. Uh, Travis Wu's red deck didn't really make a huge showing. It made a showing over at SCG this weekend. Um, yeah, there really wasn't a there wasn't a whole lot of mono red shooting around. My friend uh, JT, who used to commentate with us, uh, who should be back at some point, uh, he piloted mono red the week that this was shot to a decent finish. Um, test, test. Forget the record. Testing one, two, hand, one, two. Which is actually a lie. I remember the record. <coughs> but I'm going to let you guys see Testing the rest of the volume. videos. Volume test.
and I'll give a uh, update on final placing in the final video, which the final video, uh, if you guys are looking ahead and watching these in order, which I hope you are, it gives you the ambiance of being there with us and watching each of our spectated matches. Um, it is my friends Gordon Wright and Anthony Hien um, facing off playing Is It Control against uh, U White Flash, Gordon running uh, Is It Control, and ADB Anthony running um, Blue White Flash. So our board position has gotten a bit, uh, well, his board has gotten very condensed down to. Uh, threats not allowing me to sneak in for three damage that I need to finish him off. He plays a hunt master and goes up to five, gets his token. Um, he has a decent amount of aggro on board, and at this point I'm just hoping to flip a bonfire. <laughs> and just say that's that, and then it would make me feel a lot better with having drawn all these uh, all this mana. So I'm going to drop a Garrick Relentless which is pretty solid because I really don't want that Huntmaster flipping. I shouldn't be taking this time to think about what I want to take out because it's really simple. Like, that Huntmaster flips, it's just, it's a bad day. For four toughness plus on two creatures is not what I want to be dealing with. Um, my deck does make use of murder, um, which a lot of people think is a little slow. Um, I think it's perfectly fine considering the way the game has slowed down and the threat density has gone away from, at this point, uh, hyper-aggressive decks and was more focused on value creatures, uh, Olivia Voldaren, Huntmaster of the Fells, um, Angel of Serenity, Angel of Restora Restoration Angel, like, the list goes on with these value creatures, value, value spells under, um, Unburial rights, like, it, it, it's huge. So, Angel Serenity comes in, dropping me five. Uh, I should be at 16 at this point, if I'm not mistaken. Taking one earlier from an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Uh, I will drop my Underworld Connections. Start getting some CAD draw, kid. Wicked CAD draw. Uh, if you can't tell, I am from Boston. That is somewhat my accent. It will come out at times. That one was definitely forced. So, Underworld Connections will draw me a card, play my land, which at this point I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lands in play. That's a lot of lands, my friends. That is a lot of lands. So, my outs at this point are uh, Bonfire of the Damned, possibly Rakdos Return. I'm unsure if I cited it in. I think I did. And a Zealous Conscript. And hey, look, more land. At this point, I'm drawing... Um, I should be at 14 life. Uh, sorry, 9 life, because he just went with Angel Serenity. Um, it doesn't matter if I top deck a Bonfire, because Bonfire is huge in this situation. Um, I'm able to cast it and get rid of his other dudes, and still had the mana open, assuming that was not an Olivia Voldaren, to animate Kirun and swing in with both my 3-3s, three knocking him down to 2. Oh, there is a beast over on the top right also, so my fault. It's kind of off-camera. In fact, I'm not even sure if I realize in-game if that's in play or not. <laughs> but right now, Olivia is a pretty solid draw. <sighs> Excuse me. I had just woken up while I film in this. <clears throat> so I'm going to pass turn. I think I should have been a little bit more aggressive in the situation, animating the uh, key rune and swinging in. If I animate the key rune and swing in, like, he can double block. I still kill one of his things. Um, or I split the damage effectively enough to shoot down the other two. And then keep my flyer in the air for another shot at his Avacyn's Pilgrim. And take out the Angel of Serenity. This would have been the turning point of the game right here. I mean, he needs an answer to Olivia. If he doesn't have it, then it's pretty much game. I shoot three times. I'm able to block the Angel. I have two blockers for whatever's on the ground. Like, it's, it's just an ideal situation to be in. Peter has two cards in hand, I believe. 
as we enter the 20 minute mark on this video. And he's going to Oblivion Ring. Pretty easy decision. <laughs> yeah, you get rid of the biggest threat there. Now, I'm going to ponder this over for a little bit, but in the interest of saving time, I uh, cut in the video short. I end up losing that one. Um, in retrospect, what I would have done differently is gone aggressive after the uh, Zealous Conscript um, play, right after I got rid of the Huntmaster. Uh, that's the time that I should have been uh, pushing damage in. But, hey, live, learn. The reason that you do a lot of this on camera is so you can see what you did wrong and correct it. Peter played a great game. Um, always fun playing against him, even when he was playing uh, Tempered Steel. It annoyed the hell out of me. But, hey, that's the first episode of FNM TV. Uh, thank you guys for sticking with it and watching. Uh, we're going to go over to the second round. And uh, we should have JT going up against uh, Joseph D. Donato. Uh, heavy hitter for Massachusetts. Uh, if you look at the uh, state rankings, Joe's in the top 10. Uh, really good player. We'll end up watching that one. Thank you guys. Later.